One of the biggest and most important updates to Ableton Live 12, at least for me, are the changes to MIDI editing. And I'm not just talking about the MIDI generation and transformation tools, which I'll probably cover in another video, but I'm also talking about the way in which we can interact with and edit notes that are already input into the MIDI editor to dramatically speed up our workflow and make things like creating interesting rhythms and polyrhythms really, really quick and super easy. So to demonstrate these new features, I'm gonna start with a simple pluck sound and just quickly generate a simple chord. Here is our interesting pluck sound. And let's just go ahead and create a MIDI clip here in the session view by double clicking into this clip slot and opening up the MIDI editor. Now Ableton Live 11 introduced the ability to have kind of scales per clip to allow us to easily see what notes were in any kind of applicable scale. But Ableton Live 12 takes this a step further with scale awareness, which we'll touch on in a second. But to start with, and so we can use scale awareness later down the line, let's go ahead and set a scale for our clip. To do this, I'm gonna go over to the left in the clip and let's go to the scale section. Let's work in say G minor for this. So I'm gonna select this G from the first drop down menu and minor from the second drop down menu, which it's already on. And then just to make sure scale awareness is on and the scale mode is on, we just need to make sure this little scale mode button here is clicked. To make life also a little bit easier, I'm gonna highlight the scale that we're actually working in by going up to the highlight scale button here or just pressing the K button on my keyboard. So now what I wanna do is input a G minor chord. So all I'm gonna do is just go down and find a low G. Let's go to G2 right here. Let's turn on the MIDI editor preview so we can hear what we're doing and input a G. Now, the first new feature of Ableton Live 12's MIDI editor that we're gonna look at is the ability to now stretch or fit this note to a selected time range. So, because I want this note to last for the whole bar, I'm gonna select the whole bar and I'm gonna right click on the note and come up to fit to time range, which we can see the keyboard shortcut here for is Option, Command, and J. So Option, Command, and J. And now that note is gonna be stretched to the time range that I've selected. If I undo that, say I only wanted this to last for three beats, I could select three beats, use that same keyboard shortcut, and it will stretch that note to the selected time range. Now, because I want this to last for the whole bar, I'm just again gonna select the whole bar and use Command and Option J to stretch this or fit this to the whole bar. And now let's create a chord, a G minor chord, except instead of just copying the note, I'm gonna use a new feature here, which is the add interval feature. So this add interval feature here allows us to add a new note either above or below a MIDI note, an existing MIDI note, at a certain musical interval. If you have a scale set for the current clip, this turns from being in semitones, which we can see if I disable the scale here, it's currently in semitones, to if I re-enable the scale, it being in scale degrees. And why this is super useful is it means I can add notes or intervals either above or below a selected MIDI note, and I can be certain that any new note I add using this feature is always gonna be in the key that I've selected. So let's select the G here, and because I wanna create a triad, I'm just gonna go up to this add interval selection and change this to plus two scale degrees, which it's already set at, and then click on the add interval button. And I'm gonna click on this add interval button again, and now I've created a really simple G minor triad by using this add interval control here. If I wanted to add another note on top of this D here, all I need to do is just click on this add interval control and I can change which note is added by just adjusting this interval size. And so we can actually add a third up an octave as well. And now let's say I wanna add some rhythmic interest to this pattern. Currently it's just a single chord, but let's make it a little bit more interesting. For instance, let's make it play consistent eighth notes. Now previously, in order to do this, I'd have to select all of the notes, shorten them, and then duplicate them. But Ableton Live 12 makes this really easy by giving us the ability to split selected notes to a grid. So for example, if I wanna turn this chord here, which is just a single chord lasting for a whole bar, into consistent eighth notes playing the same chord, all I need to do is set my grid to eighth notes by either going up to the grid selection in the top right or just using the keyboard command, which is command and two or control or two to increase my grid size, selecting all of the notes with command and A, and then I can just press command and E or control and E to split all of these notes to the current grid. And now I've created a consistent eighth note pattern using this current chord. Ableton Live 12 also gives us the ability to join existing MIDI notes. So for example, let's say I didn't want these notes here or these chords to be playing consistent eighth notes. I wanted this to just be a single chord. I could select all these notes and press Command and J or Control and J to join these notes together. And now I've altered the rhythm that these chords are playing. 
Let's go ahead and join a few more notes together. For example, let's join maybe these first two chords and potentially these last two chords here as well. Now, not only can we split notes by the grid, but there's also two other ways that we can split notes in our MIDI editor. The first way is to split notes manually at any point that we want by holding down the E button on our keyboard, or because I have the MIDI keyboard enabled, I can hold down Shift and E, and now I can just simply click and drag wherever I want to split a note. And this allows you to create really interesting rhythms by just chopping up existing notes. The other way that we can split notes is into an equal division of smaller rhythmic intervals by holding down Option or Alt and E and then clicking and dragging up or down on an existing note. For example, let's say here I wanted to make this last D into five evenly split D notes. I could just hold down Option and E and then click and drag up to split this D note into five different D notes that are evenly spaced within the length of this note. And this allows for the really easy creation of interesting polyrhythms that might otherwise be a little bit more difficult to create. Let's go ahead and rejoin all of these notes here in the middle and split this top B note three times. Maybe split this middle B flat note five times and potentially split this D note here twice. And so now we've created a three over two over five polyrhythm in this particular chord really easily. And if I wanted to make this a little bit more interesting, I could of course just join say these two notes and I could join these two notes. Lastly, we can also stretch the timing of existing MIDI notes up to 10 times their normal length or 10 times shorter than their normal length using the stretch control over here. For example, let's say I wanted to stretch out these two Ds right here. I could select both of them and I could go to this stretch here and maybe stretch them out to three times their normal length. Or if I wanted to get really wild, I could maybe do like 1.3 times their normal length. And using all of these features in conjunction with one another is a really cool way to create interesting rhythms, polyrhythms in a MIDI clip. And now that we've got a really cool rhythmic pattern for this simple chord, let's go ahead and turn this into a full chord progression using the new tools as well. So first off, let's just duplicate this one bar long MIDI clip into a four bar long MIDI clip by going over to the duplicate button on the left, clicking this twice, and now we've duplicated that one bar long MIDI clip into four bars with the exact same notes and rhythms. And now we can use the new transpose feature to transpose any of the notes in this MIDI clip in terms of scale degrees rather than semitones, which allows us to transpose whole chords whilst making sure they still remain in key. So for example, let's zoom out here and let's create a chord progression by adjusting the transposition of the notes in bars two, three, and four. So I'll select all of the notes in bar two and come over to this section just above the add interval section, which is this transpose option. And by clicking and dragging up or down, I can transpose all of these notes in scale degrees, which will make sure they remain in the selected key of G minor. Let's do this again with bar three. And let's maybe do this again with bar four. And so now we've created a really simple chord progression. You can see we missed some notes here and there. That doesn't really matter. But all of the notes that we've moved have remained in key. And we can make this chord progression even more interesting by say grabbing these notes here, transposing these, maybe transposing these notes as well. And maybe we could transpose these notes. And 
if you're not fantastic at music theory, this is a really, really great way to create interesting chord progressions that you know are in key really simply and easily. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I'd love to invite you to leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new, and if you're really enjoying my content and other videos like this, I'd love to invite you to head over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can support me by buying me a coffee, purchasing some cool stuff from my shop like Ableton Racks or samples and things like that, or you can become a member to support me on a monthly basis and also get cool things like free downloads, monthly mentorships, and even monthly track feedback as well. And if you're just getting started in your music making journey, you might find some value in my online course, Create Your Own Music in Ableton Live, The Fundamentals, which is an online course that is tailored to both beginners and intermediates that takes you through absolutely everything you need to know about creating your very own music in Ableton Live, but with skills that are translatable to other digital audio workstations and aspects of music production in general. You'll find more information for everything in the links below. Now this is getting a little bit chaotic, so let's go ahead and maybe rejoin some of the existing MIDI notes here to remove some of these kind of stranger polyrhythms. And I'm just selecting the notes and pressing Command and J, once again, or Control and J, to join the selected MIDI notes. Maybe these ones, let's join those again, and potentially let's join these as well, and maybe even join these ones. Now this synthesizer sound that I'm using to create this chord progression actually has velocity mapped to adjust certain parameters like filters and envelopes in the synthesizer. And Ableton Live makes it really easy for us to randomize the velocities of these different MIDI notes, which will allow us to create some even more interest in the sound, in sounds that have velocity mapped to control things other than volume. To do this in Ableton Live 12, all we need to do is go down to the randomize button or the randomize section in the velocity editor. I'm just gonna select all of the different notes here with Command or Control and A and just adjust just this randomize amount very, very subtly to add some slight randomization to these MIDI notes. Let's just select all of these and drag them down a little bit. So we have a bit more of a plucky sound and then we can randomize them from here. Now, if we want to, we can add kind of even more wonkiness to this chord progression or this rhythm using the new humanized feature in Ableton Live 12, which will allow us to offset the start positions of each of the notes by just a tiny little bit to kind of mimic this idea that humans are never gonna play anything entirely exactly in time, at least not like a computer can. So to do this, let's select again all of the notes with Command or Control and A. And now I can go over to this little humanized section here. And if I simply adjust this humanized amount, you can see that the start positions of each of these notes will adjust based on how high this humanized amount is. And if I want to then rehumanize these notes, I just need to click on this humanized button. And now if we zoom in, we can see the start positions of all of these notes have been slightly offset. Now, because we have quite a chaotic rhythm going on here, this might not sound the best, but let's have a listen to it anyway. I think that sounds pretty cool. And so hopefully that gave you some ideas on how you can utilize Ableton Live 12's new MIDI editing features to create interesting rhythms and really quickly create things like chord progressions using scale awareness and the transpose feature. We didn't even dive into any of the new MIDI generation or transformation tools or even the probability groups, but they're something that I'll cover in a future video. For now, if you wanna learn about some more pro MIDI editing techniques, check out this video right here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something and I'll see you all in the next video.